Uh, we're now going to talk about uh, all your solo projects. Now, um, your gu uh, guitar playing and, and um, music abilities are now in so many Australian albums, uh, including the Stetsons, which is like Australia's first super group. Okay. Um, I had very little to do with the Stetsons, to be yeah. honest. I was just played on one song. Was that for the Crocodile Dundee soundtrack? Was no. that that one? No, it was just on the first album, just played one song and I was in the film clip. <laughs> ah, so that's why you always associated uh, with them, because um, yeah. for those who don't know, it was um, members of Ganga Jane, Mental as Anything, and the Flying Emus formed almost like the first Australian super group. More of a stupid group. Really. Stupid group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very fun. Uh, which member train. of Mental of Anything was involved in it, the lead singer? or? Uh, Reg was, obviously, yeah. the guitar player. <clears throat> and famous artist and train in my head without a driver was was there was the single yeah and he wrote that I'm pretty sure he wrote it so it was a very funny song okay great, great song yeah um, well, what about um Peter Martin, with Martin Plaza in it I think he was in it I'm not sure I've only just learned learned about this so yeah I think there's so many people in it there's look into so it so many people from everywhere it's just, yeah um, so it was only like a short lived sort of project yeah I think um I think that was Buzz's baby too. Yeah. The, uh, the drummer from Game Chain. Yeah. I think he, he had a lot to do with the organisation of it, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah. So. You're involved in three of Wendy Matthews' albums, probably her biggest ones. Mm. Um, what was it like working with Wendy Matthews? Oh, joy. She's a beautiful woman. She's just a true gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely woman, yeah, it's just, um... And for um, people watching, um, on our website we have that song up there so you can um, mm. have a listen to see what um, Robert's talking about. She's an amazing singer. Amazing singer, yeah. And you were involved, like, with the Lily album, that was number two. Yeah, it was Spent huge. 52 weeks on the Australian, that's like the whole year on the Australian yeah, charts. It's unbelievable, yeah, I had been fortunate <coughs> writing two songs on that one. And played some guitar, a bit of keyboards, I think. I was on the first album called Emigre. Yeah. yeah that was, Is that the album with um, Let's Kiss Like the Angels? Yes. Was that that one? Yeah. Because that was a big album too. Oh, yeah, that was huge, yeah. And, um, I sort of prefer that album. It's a bit more Devil May Care. And yeah. <clears throat> I got the big American producer in T Bone Burnett. Ah, okay. T Bone Burnett. T Bone, yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he came. It was a great album. A little bit more polished, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was just uh, it was great. I was had the fortune of writing two songs on that one as well. And probably played a bit more on that one. And did the odd concert with her. Yeah. I didn't tour as such. Just sort of like special guest sort of person would come in and play sort of the songs that I wrote sort of thing. And because I was yeah, touring with Danger Jane a lot. And, yeah, and, and I think one song on the third album. Um, but yeah. And, the Absent Friends, that No Better But You, was, was such a big hit that I guess that's what you know, sort of persuaded her to do her own thing. You know? <coughs> Those are good decisions, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's such a lovely woman. Do you keep in so, touch so with her? So talented. And not lately, no. Just, mm. just, no, it's just lost, lost touch a bit, yeah, the yeah. last few years since that thing. And what was it like working with Peter, is it Blakely? Peter <laughs> with, um or his song Crying in the Chapel, that oh, was his big song. Absolutely. He even worked with him. Absolutely, yeah. And even that's a big song, like that's yeah. still on the radio a lot. Uh, absolutely, that that none of none of us played on that song. That's when he went to America and Yeah. Was all so yeah, with his earlier work? Earlier stuff mucking around and I mentioned that Kings Lane studio that Jeff used to run. A lot of things came out of that little studio, yeah. You know, oh, okay. Gladly and Wendy Matthews, Gang Jang, all hanging around there. And so we were all just hanging around together. And Blakely was, Blakely, you could hear Blakely's voice off in the distance, like him, nobody but you. Oh, okay. He's a bit of backing singers. <laughs> yeah, he's a lovely guy, though. He's sort of like a lovable rogue. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I miss him. And you also talked uh, earlier on our, um, our other take about um, Yuffu Wendy. You also spent five years with them. So. Mm. About four and a half, I think. So how many instruments do you play all up? Like, you're working with all these different people. Oh. I read that you played a banjo in one 
in one album. Yeah, I played banjo on Game Chains on Ambulance Man actually. My first album. I'm not a very good banjo player. I just, <laughs> I just tinker around with it. And yeah. Sean Kelly, I play banjo on one of his songs. So let's talk about your solo work. Uh, firstly, um, Susanna Sweet. Ooh. Talk us through that because that's yeah. um, that's described as a semi-orchestral yeah. song, a uh, song cycle. Mm. So how did that come about? So you played yeah. with you know Yoffu Wendy, Wendy Matthews, uh, Ganga Jang, Ooh. and then now you're doing a a semi orchestral song. <laughs> if I, I, need, I need someone if I to talk, talk, that right. I need someone to talk me through it. Actually. <laughs> so, uh, Sounds very interesting. I guess though. it all goes back to that very first thing I said. That very first influence that I ever had was Chopin when I was seven years old. Classical music. It just floored me. I just love the mastery of those people, those composers, and yeah. the excellence that they strive for. And the, beauty that they strive for, the melodies and, the, you know, and it requires everything you could ever possibly know about music to, to be able to do that stuff. So it's always been a total challenge to me to always have one's foot in the classical world. Because it, yeah. it, it just, it's just good for any musician, I think, to try and write that sort of music because it really helps your songwriting as well, your pop, because it's, it's, and then likewise your pop writing rock writing or whatever, folk writing helps that. And yeah, if you keep, you keep a lot of stuff going on, it's constantly keeping the pop to stir it up. You know? but uh, what about Secrets in the Sand? Yeah. Is that the same sort of Same sort of vibe, scenario? yeah. Um, yeah, um, a lot of influences about this country once again. And, but also, a lot, of, a lot of that album is about a lot of the beaches as well, where where, you know, it's like where Gangajang really sort of cut our teeth, you know, found our audience in, in all the beaches. Yeah. You know, it's where, where we play all the time, you know, the Gold Coast and such like Coast and Narrabeen. And, yeah, it's just, uh, so a lot of those songs were tip of the cap to, to where, where I came from in Gangajang, you know, the yeah. influences and, and respectful tip of the cap to the audiences. To, is to come and see us there. So yeah, the, the album's just about the country once again, with the yeah. coastline and the, the centre. Do you find with these, when you're writing all by yourself, do you find the lyrics harder, or, or do, you, um, do you love writing lyrics? And yeah, I do. Or do you prefer just writing music? Oh, both, yeah. The lyrics are harder. I find them harder, yeah. Especially trying to fit four words and the spot that where should only be one, you know, you yeah. find that one word. But, but, uh, it's all it's all hard, but it's all very easy too. It's all I never struggle really. I, I guess I've always got so much stuff going on, fires to be put out everywhere. Yeah. But there's never seems to be a struggle. It's, it's, ah, it's okay. always a struggle about which idea is going to be the best one for this thing, I suppose. Well I can't think of anything. It never seems to be that. Too many. Yeah, trouble with Gang James, you've got too many ideas. He yeah. <laughs> actually said too much talent, that's what he said. Well, that's always a good thing. <laughs> trouble with Gang James, you've got too much talent. No, yeah. I tend to disagree. But, well, that yeah. ended up breaking up the Beatles. Luckily, it didn't happen with you yeah, guys. <laughs> it, it can be true. Yeah, talent's probably the wrong word. That's his word. What's his yeah. name? Michael Crawley was his name. Yeah. But yeah, it can, uh, can be the, the end of some bands. Yeah. Mm. It's like making. And, um, so it's that, again. Uh, there's some talk on our Oz Music Central website about writing passionate music and a few of our members said that they carry notebooks with them everywhere they go so they can write down their ideas. Absolutely. Do you do the same Absolutely. for that? Absolutely. So you recommend to... Absolutely. No matter what it is, just write it down. You never yeah. know where that's going to come from. Have you found that you've written stuff and then a year later you flip through and went, oh yeah, oh, I'll do that. All the time, absolutely. And it's amazing now. How those things come back, you know, and how all spawn other ideas. And yeah, I've got books and books full of them. You know, it's, just, it's unbelievable. But yeah, you've got to do that. You know, bits of conversation because you really you often don't remember those things. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that too because you've written a book. <laughs> so, how do you say the title? Uh, it's called the, the Second Best Book of Disunderstandableism. 
<laughs> explain that to our viewers. Well, well it can't be explained. That's the thing. <laughs> if you try to explain it, then you're actually going against what the whole. What it's called? <laughs> is a, it's full of ox. It's, yeah, it's like it's just an oxymoron, you know, or paradoxymoron. Really. Yeah. It's just the opposite of an opposite. Yeah, so, um, so you've done it all. Yeah, I mean, it's written just, books, it's, being in other people's albums, being in a well, the book has an awesome band. Thing. The book is still sitting there on my shelf, I mean, <laughs> which is sort of weird because they actually even published it. Seems to go against the grain from the yeah. book. Of that. It's, but it's, you've still written a book. Is, <laughs> yeah, I've written another one since then. It's just, it's a, well, it's called the Acronym Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to rewrite the. Dictionary that we're doing with all acronyms. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's very difficult. I'm, I'm starting to give up on doing the whole dictionary. But, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of acronyms. Yeah, wonderful. 